Yes, here we go. Another top name on open goal. It's Mr. Chung's most handsome son-in-law. Kyle Lafferty, what's happening, big man? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm very good. For anyone that doesn't know who Mr. Chung is, it's a guy who's produced five angels. Kyle goes out with one of them. Big Dazzle Day goes out with the other. How is it having that clown as a brother-in-law? Uh, it's all right, to be honest. Um, if you had asked me 10 years ago, I would have been calling him every, every word under the sun, to be honest. <laughs> but no, nah, he's he's top guy. Um, I think we both admitted for two or three days meeting each other that I used to think he was a prick and he, he <laughs> I was a prick, so... I still think he's a prick. <laughs> yeah, but no, nah, he's, he's top guy. Oh, he's coaching now as well, isn't he? And you're, um, you're with the club, so has he been taking you for one-on-ones at the back? No, I've been taking him. <laughs> oh, have you ever had a kick about the guy? Uh, we've had, a, we've played five or say two or three, maybe two or three years ago. Uh, but yeah, it was easy. I kept it easy on him. Oh, let's see the, let's see the collection behind you. Oh, this one, just all my, uh, all, all my medals have fell. <laughs> <laughs> What's that three in a row one? <laughs> Oh, what a man. I was going to wear my sash as well, but I thought, nah, it's getting iron. <laughs> it's getting iron. Who's ironing it? Big Daz? Aye. Uh, he wore it. He wore it. He wore, oh, last, yeah. he wore it last weekend, so I was like, mate, you have to wash it and iron it. <laughs> Tremendous. Oh, I need to ask you, I've always wondered this. Do you use, uh, have you ever sat and watched a set of Green just game again? Aye. What's it like? That, I think we were like, it was low-key, to be honest. If I was there by myself or my mates, it would have been, it would have been crazy. Like, but, nah, we just sat there, a cup of tea, some crisp chocolate, and just watched it. Brilliant. Right, mate, we'll kick on with the career. Uh, I'm moving all this. No, I'll keep that. I'll keep my medals. Keep my medals, mate. Tremendous. Uh, right, the youth career. I grew up in uh, Northern Ireland. How was that? Were you, were you ever in a bit of trouble for that, Kyle? Nah? Um, I, I, I was from a wee village, like probably the nearest town was about 15 miles away. So I was like well away from all that stuff. Um, probably, I think everyone's probably, you know, from Omar and Eskelon through the bombings, like the big bombings there, but that's the nearest towns for me. So I, uh, I was from a wee village, um, 2,000, 2,300 people from it. Um, so I was, I was kept away from that. Um, but to, to play football, I kind of had to travel. So I had to go to them towns to, to play in the, middle, the train for the Middle Cup team and the Northern Ireland trials and stuff like that there. So, but uh, like growing up, I made my debut at the senior team where I'm from at, at 14. And, uh, 14? What, uh, men's, men's football? Yeah, men's team, yeah. But I was a big dangly thing, man. I was just twice the size of them. But um, yeah, started when I was 15, or 14. Played two years there and um, played the Milk Cup for for Fermanagh, one of the counties, um, for four years, two years maybe. Yeah, two years. And then I went to, with the, the Northern Ireland team there. So it was, it was all right. It was good. Were you, uh, were you a big Rangers fan growing up? Yeah, I was, I've always supported them. Um, I think when when you're from Northern Ireland, see they're Rangers. I like to be honest. Um, but um, all my mates were all Rangers fans, and any old firm we used to. It was always obviously up every Saturday at twelve, twelve thirty. So we'd be my football practice started at half ten, so I'd be running off the pitch before the end of the game and home showered get a few pounds off my mum and run, and run down to the local pub to watch the game with my mates. Did you get steaming? Did you get steaming watching it? <sighs> One or two pints, but... <laughs> yeah, I was 14 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you're a first team player, man. At 14, you can drink pints, man. Ah, I damn right, yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was good. Um, you know, who did you like? Who, was your, who did you like Rangers-wise? Players? Uh, Albert's man. He was... I can, I can always remember two two goals he scored against Celtic. He's uh, he's got the ball and he's dribbled with it and he's went to went to shoot dummied went to shoot dummied and finished it off. 
And he's done that. I think he's done it twice in the game. And I was like, this guy's incredible. So I, I was out at the park after the, after the game trying to kick with my left foot. And obviously, if you, if you see me play now, you can understand that it didn't, didn't really go down well. <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, so when did the move to Burnley come about? So many English guys go to the Milk Cup and that's where they get spotted. Were you, were you the same? You know what, mine? My, the Milk Cup thing for me was strange because I've played, so I, I've played, I think it was four years from, for, for Mana, my county, and then I've gone into the, the, the Northern Ireland team. So I was playing and I got sent off. So you miss, you miss, you miss a game. I think you do. So you miss a game. And the game after, um, Liverpool scout was coming to watch me. He came before, got sent off. So he's obviously gave me another chance. Came again. So my manager at the time went into the referees. Uh, changing room, he went, listen, Liverpool scout's here looking at Lafferty. Just obviously go easy. So one of the, one of the linesmen was from my area, from for the town. I'm close to. So the balls went out of play, and I'm complaining this my my throwing, and I've I've probably used the word I shouldn't have, and he's flagged up. What's going on here? So he sent off again. I'm like, ah, so I'm I'm. I'm a young boy, so I'm walking off the touchline in tears. And my dad's he's off his head. He's he's standing there at the end of the game, waiting for the linesman to come off the bathroom. <laughs> I like this. Come on. So like it was it was crazy. So I was like, oh, that's that's me messed up my chances. So there's a wee guy from Belfast, his name was Raymond Laverty. Um he was a Burnley scout. So he got all all the guys from Northern Ireland, he got a team together to go over and play Burnley. Right. And uh, it was for, for one night, got, got a wee minibus, drove over. And I, this is the first time I've ever been away from home. And I thought, we drove to bloody Me uh, Mexico. It took that long. <laughs> so um, went over, played the game. I've I'd, I'd done amazing. Probably never played such a good game in my life. And they won the same straight away. So that's how Burnley came about. Um, when I, I left, when I was just turning sixteen, so we always we, like obviously everyone knows you as a bit of a madman. We we always like that as a kid as well. Yeah, I was always I was always into something. Uh, I never shut. Half uh, uh, the time I don't talk sense. Carry on, carry on. And it was um, it was. Um, I'm always in the middle. Always in the middle of things. Things. Uh, right, you go over to Burnley, mate. Obviously, a young lad away from home for the first time. Uh, was there other guys that had travelled and they were staying in digs in Burnley with you? With you? Yeah, um, yeah um, there was two. There was two, there was two in Dublin. Uh, Chris McCann, a guy called Martin Riley. Chris obviously came through with me to the first good team. Player, Chris McCann, midfielder. Uh, he's really good. So he is. Um, he had a a few bad injuries, but he's he's kicked on again. I think he's in America now. But he um, so the, there was us three, just obviously sixteen to eighteen, grown up together. Three, to be fair, they were crazy as well. Um, but we we enjoyed our enjoyed our time, so we did. We just getting out of bit of trouble, the young kids at Burnley. Yeah, we did. Um, it was I probably can't really say on here <laughs> what we got up to, but it was um, it was enjoyable. Like Chris passed his test early doors, so it was like out and about in the car and seeing cyclists cycling down the road, and you know <laughs> if you get the picture. But, uh, yeah, it was good. But Burnley, would you like, get pulled in? Like, would you just get pulled in for the manager and that for having too much carry on? Uh, not, no, not really, because the, the coach at the time, uh, his name was Paish. Um, he, he was, he, I think he knew before he signed us, before he signed me, that, that I was off my head, that he, um, he basically left things go. Uh, it, was, it was good, and he was a top guy, and obviously um, him being more lenient, it was like, we, we got away with a lot more. 
free throw. Uh, Steve Connell was the manager. What about that accent, man? You know what? I have a lot of time for Steve. Like he, um, he obviously gave me a chance, got me into the first team and stuff like that. There, so it was, it was, it was brilliant, and he treated me and Chris like like a role, like his own. Um, when we when he left when he when he left Burnley, the, there was obviously a tear in our eyes, and me and Chris when we were, came off the training pitch, and he um, he's obviously told us that he, we were leave, or he was leaving. We went and skipped in Tesco's and bought a wee bottle of champagne. I was like, uh, yeah, we we done that. To be fair, he, he was brilliant with me and Chris. Um, but obviously, football, football, and you get people come into your lives and leaves them. Mate, I've played against these teams and he can go mental on the side, man. Oh, mate. Would he hammer boys? Aye, he used to hammer everyone. He used to hammer like all of us, to be honest. Even like, he looked after me and Chris, but he used to go off his head. Like, I remember, like, I got on the wrong side of him once. It was, uh, so I was getting, I was making a name for myself in the right way. And I was like, uh, there was a few bids coming in, like Fulham was interested. Laurie Sanchez went to Fulham and he was, he, he wanted to sign me. So it was, it was a decent, decent amount of money. Um, so they turned it down and I'm sitting on, I'm sitting on peanuts at the, uh, at the club. So um, I went and spoke to him in, in his office and I was like, Gaffer, you're going to have to, if you're knocking these bids, but I'm basically saying what the senior lads are telling me. So I'm like, if you're knocking back bids, you're gonna to have to give me decent money. I wasn't asking for a lot. I think uh, I'm not sure what I was asking for, but I was like, "You wanna have these?" Like, no, I can't. The club can't do it. I went, but the bids are coming in for me, so you're gonna to have to do something. He's like, ah. So we've we had a away game later that day. So we've gotten a bus, and the lads are still talking to me. And I'm like, I'm gonna see him, I. So he's uh, we've landed at the hotel, uh, a cup of tea, knocked on his room, got his room number and knocked on his room and he's come out half shaven. He's went, what? Went, can I speak with you? He's went, nah, <laughs> close the door. So after the game, he's popped away and he's like, we're going to give you a new contract and stuff like that there and <clears throat> uh, just come and, come and see me. Uh, Monday or Tuesday so um, I went and seen him and he gave me a, to be fair it was it wasn't the greatest increase of salary but it was a, it was alright at my age but <clears throat> he uh, I met him in Dubai oh, years after and he's we had a beer and he's speaking to me he's like you know you're right you what you're asking for you should have been on that money but I just wanted to look after you. I just didn't want to give you so much money at that young age. I mean, oh, the fuck? imagine the amount of horses I would have been betting back then. I was like, ah, oh. no, to be fair, he, he, he was brilliant with me and I have a lot of respect to, for him. And I think I actually know his number off by heart still. Um, it was just such a weird number. It was one of them private numbers. I'm sure I, if I sat down, I'd be able to get it. But, <laughs> See, when you're saying about the older boys in your ear all the time. Who, who were the older boys at Burnley that were good? Who, who was the ones that would be doing that to you? For a week, we grew up, me and Chris got into a team at the right age and there was a lot of, lot of players that would, would help us. Um, Danny Coyne, um, Graham Alexander would be there. Um, Ali Akinbay, he was, he was brilliant with us. He, 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 he'd still um, touch base and he'd still look out for Arsenal. Um, James O'Connor, uh, players I got there, Brian Hansen, Giffen, Noel Williams. Giffen was a wee bit crazy, to be fair, but he was. They're all. I, I, what would he do? What would he do? It was crazy. Like me and Chris came onto the scene, and he, he'd be like, we were a wee bit chirpy, me and Chris. And uh, one day after the train, I was a wee bit chirpy coming off the pitch. I think it was uh, we were doing shooting, and I've I'm, one of the days I've been on fire, so. I'm, Scoring a few, and I'm like chirping big brain, and sending goals. I'm like, I just see a flying pig and all that, giving all that banter. So, uh, <laughs> big beastie, his nickname is. So, I was just like, 
having a bit of banter. So me and Chris is usually goes to dinner, goes to lunch together, come back, shower, and just head into the town for a coffee. So Chris is nowhere to be seen. So he's obviously been given the heads up. So I'm I'm in the shower getting getting ready. Big Brian Jensen comes in with one of them big weight body body, body bags, like they're fifteen twenty k. Beastie's probably about two hundred k anyway. So he pins me to the ground, body bag on top of me, lying on me, gifting strolls through with boot poly. <laughs> me, he covered me the head to toe <laughs> in boot polish. Spent about three hours with the scrubber in the in the shower, and once it was done, Chris comes through the shower ready to go. Where the hell were you? He's like, I was over for lunch. I was like, no, you weren't, because I was at lunch. So he's obviously been giving the heads up, and he's, he sat in his car, so he did. Meant to be your mate as well. Tell him, on it? Nah, mate, there's no mates in football. Exactly. Yeah, right. he, uh, see, Frank Sinclair was at, at Burnley at that time. See, in training, would you be up centre-forward and he'd be playing against you at centre-back? Mate, Frank would play anywhere. There'd be times Frank would play in goals. He, he honestly, he's, he's the funniest guy. Oh, he's up there with one of the funniest guys. Just his swagger and just the way he talks. And he uh, he lost his license, so he did at the time. And he had this guy driving him from I think it was Manchester. He lived driving him from Manchester, and honestly, it was it was hilarious seeing him. Like Frank, everyone knows Frank Sinclair is being Chelsea and stuff like that there. But it was he was he was brilliant, and he was he was he was a wee bit crazy as well. But he was. It's good to us, like, he's obviously played at the highest level you can and he'd, uh, he'd look after us as well. When were you, uh, when was it, when did I get to the stage that you were like absolutely flying, you knew like, I need to go and move through here, I'm, I'm ripping it up? Um, it's probably whenever I started just playing in, like, in the championship every, every week and um, I, was, I was in about the team when Steve Cottrell was there and then Owen Coyle came in and Owen, Owen was good. He, I think he, he, he'd, uh, he'd speak to me and Chris and he'd, like, on a Friday in the fiver side, we'd be like 5v5 and 5 and outside. He'd, he'd come and talk to us and he's like, you're going to rip it up tomorrow and all that and I can feel that you're going to score. And he, he was good. Owen, Owen's a good manager and to be fair, he's what a finisher he was. He he joined in on a Friday. I think the only reason we played five or sides on a Friday was him to join in. But I think I've probably seen one of the best chips in football. He um he's playing and he's got around one player and he's came up against Brian Jensen. Probably no joke about three yards out, Beast just came out, diving on his feet and he's chipped it up. Oh I man, ten feet up in there, just dropped over the line and we're like ah. Oh. Him. And he was, what did the boys crack the gap in? The boys crack uh, I was honestly one of the best finish, finish, finishes I've seen. I bet that time, mate, you were like to say, like, like uh, how close did that come to happening? Um, obviously, Celtic, massive club, chance of winning trophies and cups and Champions League. It was, 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 it was like that, like that. Link to my yeah, I couldn't. Have, I don't think I would have been able to go back home. It just would have been so hard because I was in about the Northern Ireland team, and I was like a young boy, everyone up and coming star <laughs> in the thing, in, in the team. But I think it would have been hard. I think it would have been hard for my family back in Northern Ireland as well. Um, just everything that would have came with it. Um. I did speak to Gordon, like Gordon rang me and he, he spoke to me and he's like, listen, big man, Celtic fans hated me, but look at me now. They worship me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, like Gordon, he, 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 did, he did speak to me and he, he, he said probably all the right things, but I still, I couldn't have, couldn't have done it. But thankfully, the better team in, Scotland came, came knocking on my door. See, on that though, because we've had Owen Coyle on here, and like, he makes no secret how big a Celtic fan he is. 
Was he like trying to persuade you to go to Celtic? Mate, ridiculous. <laughs> but I've, I've, left, I've left, that was the end of the season, um, to go on my holidays and go back to Northern Ireland, play football with my mates, my agents on the phone, and uh, he's saying, listen, one call is not letting you go to Rangers. He's, uh, he want, he's trying to push through the Celtic deal. I'm like, well, I'm, I'd rather sit. I'll, I'll, I won't play. I'll just, I'll just sit there. I guess it's me talking from a young, like, twenty-year-old. I was, yeah. <clears throat> nah, not happening. So I didn't want. I don't want to say I pushed through the deal because obviously I would have been happy to stay at Burnley, but I was like, I'm not going. Nah, I, I'm, I've got to stay at Burnley. So obviously, you see, Coley obviously being a Celtic fan, he's obviously trying to push this deal through. So, he probably, probably told Celtic off for two million and we'll get the deal done. But it turned out Rangers obviously made the bid and uh, after a few conversations with the, with the gaffer and with the club, um, they accepted Rangers obviously, so it was brilliant. How, how buzzing was your family in that back home when you told them that, that you were going to Rangers? Me, I was absolutely delighted. Like, it Did your was, dad have the drum it? Did your dad have the drum it? Me, me and my dad was we were in the band. So like oh, me yeah. I I grew up, me and like my mates, flute band, everything, drums and everything. Like I'd be I'd be in the house and I'd be like my, my daughter probably knows this tune <laughs> train already. She's gonna be <laughs> kitten. We we have like family outings around the house. She'd be like playing in the triangle and I'll be like in the drum behind him and Mrs. would be marching and stuff like that through the house up and down just a, just a few laps now nah, but so <laughs> me and my mates flute band all my mates joined the flute band and they'll be like we used to, I got to a stage that we used to me and my mates used to like get a CD off like the orange parades and back then you could like record it onto a tape Right. So you make hundreds of tapes and then sell them on the twelfth. So we used to have us like just sell them. So it'd be like brilliant. So, uh, so what did they all, what did they all think like your mates, your mum and dad when, when you told them signing for Rangers? Was that a party or not? Ah, it was it, it was good. It was it was obviously massive, massive thing for for someone from where I'm from the obviously to, to be a footballer to to make a name for himself. But the join Rangers were ninety five percent of the village supports, and like coming up to July and August, it's red, white, and blue curbs, flags out, and all this. It was, it was a massive thing. So, um, I well, when I when I when I signed, got my signed on fee. I was like, I'm going to treat my family. Treated them, bought my sister a car, mum, cash, sister, TVs, and stuff like this for the house and all. Because I was like, this is a thing I never, uh, no one will ever have a, probably get a chance from where I'm from ever before again to play for uh, Rangers. So it's like, I'm going to splash out, going to make sure everyone in my family feels what I'm feeling. So done all that. Um, I think it was a leaving party. They had a leaving party for me, I think, um, to go to obviously move over. So did, it you, was, did your dad come over with you to sign? My dad. Uh, did he come no, over to sign? No, 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 I think my family came over a week after. Um, I think they stayed for two weeks or so. Um, once I got an apartment, um, I got there. But um, it was just, it was, it was obviously amazing for for me and obviously my family to. To play for Rangers. See, uh, see, in two thousand and eight, Rangers obviously got to the UEFA Cup final. You were in Man, uh, you were at Burnley. Sorry, finals in Manchester. No far. Did you go? Yeah, Rangers actually got me. I couldn't get a ticket. Couldn't get a ticket anywhere. So um, I rang my agent. Surely, if I'm joining them um, in two weeks' time, I'm, they can get me tickets. Like they leave it with me. So I got three tickets. Um, so I went. 
So I got three tickets and went over to my next door neighbour and I said, listen to me, he's a massive Rangers fan as well. So he's went, I got, got a ticket for the, the Europa League final. He's like, how did you get that? I went, I'll tell you later. So I ended up, I've got him a ticket and I went, but I've got you one. So me and my, me and my three pals, me and my two pals went. Absolutely mental. Just did you know what? Did you know I school coil? Do you know how to go? I actually, I think I did text him, but he, <laughs> and, uh, I wish I had it now. <laughs> it was. I, I'm it, that watching that though. See when you know you're joining them, they're in the UEFA Cup final. Like, were you were you buzzing to go and join that team? Aye, it was like I remember walking to we met up, met up early morning in the. Uh, in in Manchester, got dropped off, having a few beers, uh, walking to the stadium. And obviously, then people would start coming up to me, get start noticing me, and are you, are you coming? I'm like, I ah, don't know, don't know. I'm like, Pfft. obviously I am, but I didn't want to say. Yeah. And then I think it was a it was the first first game I was, I've been to in the Europa League final um, for Rangers, obviously. I was grew up in Northern Ireland, didn't really have a lot of money and getting over the thing, getting over to Rangers, uh, Glasgow to watch a game was, was probably a lot to expect from my mum and dad. But from my first Northern Ireland or Rangers game, it was an amazing game. I was sitting there in the stands, singing the songs and all that and just the whole atmosphere, like the whole stadium is all red, white and blue and just this wee section is is Zenit fans. I was like, this is absolutely amazing. And I got goosebumps and everything. And then after the game, leaving, and obviously devastated. Um, got my riot gear on, started the riot. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, sorry, that was before. But um, I was leaving and getting phone calls from my mum and my dad and sisters. Are you okay? Does, we're watching in Manchester, the riots. I was like, no, I'm good, I'm good. And the closer we got to of the city centre, there was there was just chaos over us, but um they just thought I had to rip off my top and make a few petrol bombs and things like that and join in. Uh, we're a family, we stick together as Rangers fans. <laughs> <laughs> well boy, when was the first time you spoke to Walter uh, Smith? Probably for my medical. Um and obviously Walter Smith, Walter Smith. One of the greatest managers of probably is the greatest manager of Rangers time, um, and well respected throughout Scotland. Rangers and Celtic fans, oh my god, uh, just in awe of him, loved him still to the day. He's dropped me for some important games, and I still love him, still speak to him whenever I see him and stuff like that. There is brilliant guy, nice friendly with, with the with, within the family as well. So um, yeah, he's he's one of the kindest and greatest men I've ever met. Yeah, see, see that drive. Where do you drive to Murray Park or Ibrox? What's that? Where do you where do you drive to when you first go up? Is it Murray Park or is it Ibrox? Uh, I went to Ibrox. No, sorry, I went to went to Murray Park first. Done my medical, then I went across to meet Martin Bain. So he went, as Lee McCulloch told us his story, he'd done his medical at Murray Park and then Walter drove him to Ibrox, just the two of them. Was it, was it the same as you? Nah, I didn't get that luxury, man. Yeah. I, uh, I, my agent picked me up, dropped me off, uh, obviously dropped me off and drove me to, to Ibrox. But it was does, Walter just... buzz, does Walter buzz off that you're a Rangers fan? Does he like that? Uh... <laughs> he probably does, yeah. I think, I think every manager must buzz from signing, like, one of one of your own, don't they? Um, you get that extra feeling that you, you know that, that they're going to give everything for the club, and you know what you're going to get from the from from a fan. Um, mm. I have a st- story about Walter. So <clears throat> playing with Champions League, playing a uh, playing Man U. So I'm I'm starting. I think I don't think it was. Don't think we could have got out of the the group, but. It was. Don't think it was important, if you if you know what I mean. So, I'm starting. So we stayed in the hotel. Stayed in the hotel before night before. 
So we were, we were training at Murray Park in the, in the morning. So I'm, uh, I'm buzzing. So I've came off the bus with a, with a magazine in my hand, rolled up. And me and Greg White is walking down the corridor. And I, I've said something smart, telling him to go, go down to the youth section. So I'm turning right to the pros. And he, he's, in the, he's in the squad as well. He's, he's in the team, or in, uh, in the squad. So I've tried to toss him. And we've, we're wrestling away and I've, I've fell. But instead of dropping the magazine, I've held on to it. And my, my knuckle has like hit against the, the floorboard or the, the, the skirting board. And my finger was like that. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Trying to, trying to fix it. Couldn't. So I'm white. Whiter than I am now. White. <laughs> I'm like, I went into the doctor's and he's like, ah. Yeah, man. what's happened? I went, oh, I've just fell. So he's tried to pull it out and put it back in the place. It wasn't wasn't moving. So he's like, I think we're gonna have to go to the hospital. I'm like, oh, tape it up. I'm, I'm playing tonight. He's like, nah, this tape's not gonna do this. You be running really out there. <laughs> so he's went and spoke to Walter. So I'm lying in the bed and the doctors are out there, devastated. Walters came in. At this stage, he's probably the doctors probably told Walter. Or the, he's like, he's, 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 he's not playing tonight. All those came in, and I've looked up at him in the bed, and he's went and walked straight out. <laughs> Didn't say anything. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, what have I done? So I ended up, I knocked my knuckle off, knocked the top of my knuckle off, it spun round to where my finger was meant to go in, it was facing. Towards the arm. So I had this have an operation, two two pins and everything fixed. And I spent spent eight weeks with a, with a stress ball trying to squeeze it like that there. Honestly. Eight weeks with the physio. And like that. what have I done? That's worse when he doesn't even say anything, he just oh. shakes his head. No, I thought he was because Walter would he'd have when he speaks he'd have a wee bit of like a giggle and when he when he's when he talks serious, like he, when he talks, you you take note because he's he's Walter Smith. But sometimes he'd have a wee like bit about him. Mm-hmm. Um, he's came in and I thought I'm thinking he's he's obviously gonna make a joke about this. I'm like ah, shock his head and walk straight out. I'm like ah, this man. <laughs> See early on at Rangers when you first went in, were you nervous going into training? Saved myself. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I, mean, I think I turned up with Puma, uh, yeah, Umbros. Not sure, these big white Umbros, I think it was. And Chris Boyd is playing, is training. And I'm like, already scoring 20, 25 goals a game or a season. I'm, I need to do something in training. And I, I absolutely, I, I must have done about 12K in training, just running around trying to score, running around, shooting from anywhere. And it was, uh, I was just, I was like a young boy amongst men. So it was the first training session. I was just like a deer in headlights. Or rather than what, headlights. Was, the standard, was the standard much better than what, what it was at Burnley? Aye. Like, I think I, I grew into training at Burnley. I think it was obviously, you kind of grow into things, don't you? And I think it was like training for Burnley. Um, like that'd be a piece of piss and then going to Rangers training for Rangers where I'm going to be training against players that I've supported respected and I love I'm like I don't know if I'm if I'm right to be there at the moment in time at the moment in time but were you really thinking like you weren't sure if you were you were good enough to be there I was so nervous so so nervous and I was like, I'm just just a young guy here and yeah. I'm out of my depth. And then obviously I grew into it and I started getting chirpy and stuff like that there. And I was just, I was, I was fine after that. Talking about chirpy, um, how was Ali McCoist? McCoist, he was brilliant, honestly. He's, he was just, he's just one of the lads. Like we used to play, play cards at the back of the bus. So he'd, 
just say, driving up to Aberdeen, four hours. Halfway through, he'd come up, pull out his 20s. Just don't, don't, doesn't even ask. Throws in, plays three card brag. He'd win one hand, which might be two or three hundred pounds. He fucks off again. But like Griggs, he would be there. He'd be like, can't just leave. He'd be the Kaisi at the front of the bus, looking over his shoulder with his cash. Like, <laughs> but yeah, Kaisi, like he was always Kaisi was good for me as well. He he'd, he'd always speak to me, and he. Uh, he was brilliant, and um, I spoke to him recently as well. I, I seen him at some game, and no, I have a lot of time for for Ali, and he, he obviously helped me off the pitch as well massively um, at such such a young age as well. So it was it was all good. Right, mate. Everyone I speak to need to ask how intimidating is Barry Ferguson in training, man? Yeah, I think well, what we've just spoke about. I think being there and. Obviously, Fergie, he's for me. He was obviously growing up. He was Mister Rangers. He was like he stuck up for for his teammates in games, and he you just you could just tell how much he hated Celtic. And I was like, I love this. Guy. How could you tell that when he said? Not just in games, like like people say it to me, like when when I was at Hearts and the Rangers, you could just tell how much you love playing against Celtic. If you win, then it, it just means everything to you. But Fergie was just with that, that as well. Like, tackles. Someone else, someone else gets smashed. Fergie's the first one there looking to, like, back you up. And he was just, it was just brilliant. And obviously, I didn't, I didn't really get to see a lot of Fergie because he was, he was coming to the end of, obviously, he was coming to the end of his time at Rangers. And I think I might have been there six months, maybe. Um, but the time... I spent with him. He, he was brilliant, and I used to, when I when I was younger. Like I've got a massive sweet tooth. Before games, I used to eat junk, and going going to Rangers, I like I can't do this because obviously every game you must win, so I have to look after myself. So the day before a game, we're in the hotel, and I, I think I'm trying to think why we're in in one room together. He pulls out a bag full of um, cream eggs. No joke. 20 cream eggs. Who Barry Ferguson does? Hi, Fergie. And I'm like, what's going on here? He's like, it's not Easter. So he's like, sat there with a bag. He's like, do, do you want one? I'm like, I thought it was a test. Eating crap before a game. I'm like, I'll keep it for, for after the game. He's like, nah, nah, he didn't like sugar. No <laughs> You know, mate, you'll be buzzing around. Fergie's sitting tanning cream eggs. I'm like, yeah. So, you know, see if I ever want a, like, a snack before a game, I'd be in the shop. I'd, every time I see a cream egg, I'm like, yeah, cream egg sugar. <laughs> I'm eating cream eggs, man. Honestly. And I say, well, uh, you said that I'll keep it till after the game <laughs> the next day. Mate, it was like, <laughs> Barry Ferguson's giving you a cream egg. Is this a test? <laughs> For a young lad, <laughs> just a test to see if I've, my head's in the right place. Like, oh, I'll be for the next day. After the game. After the game. <laughs> I mean, did he ever, uh, did he ever slaughter you in training? Oh, mate, I, I used to think Fergie hated me. <laughs> Always on to me. If it's, if he passed me the ball, if I got the ball, I at first, see if I was one on one and some I could have passed squared it to someone. I think I would have turned and passed to the Fergie twenty meters behind me instead because I knew it wouldn't have got, wouldn't have got a shot of that. But I got like I used to always think, oh, this guy hates me," and I, I ended up like just passing the ball all the time, um, and even in the square in a circle. If a uh, if he if I gave him a bad ball or he gave me a bad ball and. I was meant to go in. I was like, I'll go in, I'll go in. It's my fault, my fault. So I'm like, putting the bib on while I'm putting the hole in it. It's like, but, and then it was recently, probably last couple of years, he'd done an interview and then he's like, obviously I, he knew when I first came in that I had talent on this. I'm like, fucking hell. 
maybe him giving me the cream egg was we'll like being generous. But uh, he, he was like, did you, ever, did, you, did you ever get to a stage where you could say something back to him, or would you never answer him back? Never. I, I like I've always grew up like always respect. Like I, I'd always give Bando back to the players, and if uh, sometimes if I lost my head, I'd, I'd get I'd. I can tell them they're off and stuff get there, but I've never done it to Fergie. Um, but I've always, I've always, still to the day, like, even at Hearts, when me and Easy, me and Easy fought all the time, like, in the, in games, like, mm-hmm. we could, we could probably rip our head, heads off each other, but I'm going, I'm like, sorry, mate, I'm just so fucking, it wasn't going well for me. Always respect. I've always respected the players, the senior players, even if they're two days older. I've always respected them because I think that's the the way it, it should be. Um, you always <clears throat> like listen to your senior players and do what do what they say. But um, yeah, I've never never once said anything to the Fergie. Even if he sorry, mate, and you would say even if even if I was in the wrong, I think. It's my fault for you. Or even if he was in the wrong, it's my fault. Sorry. <laughs> Everyone I spoke to says he's like winding people up and that. Would you, could you wind Fergie up or was that again a no-go? I didn't try, mate. They didn't even try. I was probably too afraid to. Honestly. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Like, everyone that comes on says the exact same thing, mate. Like, even big players that they were a wee bit scared of. I think, I think he just... He, he was just... He's done so well for Rangers, and he like he's like people call him Mister Rangers, and he was just Rangers. Everything he, back then, Rangers, it was Barry Ferguson, and it was he just had he probably had the same respect as as Walter Smith. On, on, like he, he was just he, he was incredible and. He's he's one of the greatest midfielders to play for Rangers, obviously. <clears throat> but he was just he, he was a great guy as well. Like he, he, I think that's he was a great captain. He was always there to back back his teammates and back his players up. He he, he had that like he, he like he felt that he had to do that, and it, it was brilliant. Right, mate, you got off to a great start, scoring on your Ibrox debut against Hearts. How, how good was that scoring at Ibrox in your debut? It was amazing, mate. I think we actually played the first game was against Falker in my, de- my, my debut. And um, Velichka, I think, scored. But I've, I'm not one on one, but I should have scored, but I fluffed it. And I went across the goal and Velichka tapped it in. So obviously, my assist, I'm running away to celebrate like I scored. But then, Obviously, as you say, at Ibrox, first first proper game. You know, I'm going to be playing, and the, the score. I think you could probably see my my face when I scored and ran my knees, and it was the greatest thing of of for club football but I've ever I've probably done. The, the, the great. The, that, that's the best feeling you've had in club football, huh? It's going your probably. Uh, first, yeah. I grew up. I wore the shirt since I was three years of age to pull it on in front of my Brooks, the fans it's probably probably the greatest feeling uh, see, see when you're saying about the nerves how, how long did that how long did they take to go away or did you still have them every day I mean I think it was just that feeling I'm, I'm probably speaking for most Celtic fans and Celtic players as well When if you support the team you're that feeling every single day you just put on that, sh- that shirt, that training kit. You just, it was just something that, like you've, I've lived to do, and I've, I've done it hundreds of thousands, like thousands of times, and it was just, just an incredible feeling. Like, <clears throat> I don't think I would have got the same feeling pulling on the Man U jersey or the Real Madrid, the Barcelona jersey. I don't, I, there wouldn't have been the same feeling. Uh, I need to ask you, mate. Who was the sniper in the stand when Charlie McGrew put his head? To, what was it? Was it Charlie's breath or Chuba? Who knows? It's crooked still. 
I'm about to get fixed. Mate. Nah, you know what? One of them, one of them times that, one of them mistakes that I made that you learn and you're, you well, you're meant to learn and move on. <laughs> what did Wallace say to you when he seen it back? You know what? It was, right, before the game, two hours before the game, maybe two and a half, we're in, in the hotel, meetings, boards came up. Charlie's been pulled out. He's the main threat. Set plays, everything. He's the main threat. So deal with him. We're going to have an enjoyable day. So, so Charlie's sent off. Oh, man. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so there, like, there was nothing. Like, I didn't even think about it for the rest of the game. So I've come in after the game. And I can't remember who was the people that was in the stands that day in their, in their suit, they were sitting watching the TV in the dressing room and they're like, do you hear what they're saying? I'm like, what? Like, you're being caned? I went, what? I went, getting, getting my drink and off. I went, nah, man, nothing. So we went out, cooled down, came back in, still talking about it. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And uh, obviously, Walter told me on the Monday and he's, he spoke to me and he said, obviously, this is not the way Rangers players obviously behaves and all this. I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing. I'm still buzzing. We won the game. We got Charlie sent off. I'm like, I, I know. I, I let myself down and I let the club down. I'm like thinking to myself, if it happens next week and we win the league, I'm doing it. But it was just it was a weird feeling. And then obviously going... That was the second last game, then I was going to Dundee United and getting booed. I mean, like, what the hell have I done here? Who was booing you, Dundee United fans? No fans, warm up, everything. I think it was Steve Davis pulled me and he's like, Listen, mate, just let it just forget about the fans. Just obviously, you've got your Rangers fans here who's going to be cheering you. Just try and block out the booing. I'm like, Block out the booing. The whole place is booing. I'm like, ah. but it was it was one of them things that you that you learned from. Oh, so that so that was the last game of the season. It was the second last game, and then we went to, we went to Dundee oh. United. Because you were seven points behind at one stage, and how did you manage to call that back? I, mean, I don't know. It was just we just know that we we, we obviously the, the last. Five games, you obviously playing against the top top teams in the in the in the league, top six. But we, we just played a football, and mate, I don't know what got over me. But the last five games, the last the last six seven games, I just everything I touched went in. And for the three seasons, I like we won the league. I just went on a goal goal scoring spree that obviously helped us win games. That. It was, it was mental, but everything that we done, we just just won games. The players so were, were, were frightening me. Like, how good were guys like Pedro Mendes, Steve Davis? Davos, like Pedro's played in the Premier League, known worldwide. He's, he was amazing. And I remember watching him one game. He's got the ball in the middle of the box, or in the middle of the, the, the pitch. And you know, when you're warming up, you're messing around with your mates. You ping up, you kick the ball into the ground and it pops up. Yeah. He's, he's done that in the middle of the pitch over someone's head. And I've, I'm on the bench and I'm like, I think it was, I don't know who it was beside me. And I'm like, did he mean that? He's like, ah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, hell. But honestly, Pedro's amazing. But for me, Devo, I've been lucky to play for, to play with some amazing players. But Devo's up there. Devo's the best player I've ever played with. Just, He's he never no matter who he plays against, he's always controlling the games and just just being himself. Nothing like distracts him or anything. Um but I like Devo that's why he's the, the the captain of his country and he's the highest out outfield player number of caps and stuff like that there. He's 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 definitely the best player I've, I've played with. 
Anyone else that was good? Anyone else that stood out to you in that Rangers team? I think oh, Boydie, obviously. Boydie used for his goals. Like he's, How many team eggs did Boydie have when Fergie was getting them out? I think Boydie had a bag of 20 himself. <laughs> no. I don't know. I'm sure he had a, he had, he had a few to be fair. Boydy had been him. But, um, was he fighting finishing wise and turning ahead? Yeah, through the right through. It, uh, unbelievable. But it, was, it wasn't like I, I was always brought up being told you don't have to try and take a leather off the ball. But, but Bordy's like getting ready and he's, t- he's telling the lads top left. And he's like rifling it, like, and it's going top in. And I'm like, what the hell? But I, he's probably the best finisher I've, I've played with. But him, between him and David Healy, he's obviously probably the top two. But would David McCoy still be joining? I Coyce would play. Coyce would be like Owen Coyle. He'd he'd just organise five a side on Friday to join in. Before, I think a few people tried to leave it in Coyce because Coyce was a wee bit mouthier. Like he'd give a wee bit more, more a bit more about him. He'd uh, if he'd if he'd uh, if he'd score, especially against Griggs, he'd be like stand up top. Like the game. What was... would McGregor say? What would McGregor say? <laughs> there wasn't like a love hate relationship because obviously the, both of them loved each other. They were the Brilliant, brilliant pals, but on the pitch they're nibbling away at each other. And it's just even in shooting, Koi should be joining in the shooting, like ping out to eighteen. You have two touches. The first one has to stay in the D, and you finish. But Koi would always have the upper hand in Grigsy, and obviously it was it was it was obviously amazing to watch. But um, yeah, it was it was good. Koi was Koi was he, he was. He was an amazing finisher um, when he still had it. See, uh, see on McGregor, like, watching him for, for the outside, and he looks like a total screwball, man. Like, what type of character is he? Andy Halliday was on saying he's the funniest guy ever. Yeah. He's, he's so normal and, like, off the pitch. He's like... like I've, I've probably seen the two, two different sides of Griggsy. Like, when my first time at Rangers, it was like... On the pitch, he was crazy, crazy, and even off it, he was just like mental as well. And maybe the f- last one in, first one to leave, my first time. I came back. I came back the second time. He's in the gym doing his bands and stuff. You see, I'm like, who's that? <laughs> he, he's just, just he was just like so, so different. Still mental on and off the pitch. And he is, he's, he's up there with the funniest guy. It's just some of his shouts. Is, is, you're like, the hell? But it, I mean, I'm, I'm watching, I'm thinking, this, there's, there's something not right with this guy. He, he should go and get help. Like, he'd just be like, joking out over nothing. I'm like, are you all right? He's like, aye, aye, aye. And he just flip out again. Like, well, last season, two, was it two seasons, uh, two seasons ago against Hibs? He's, he's kicked the ball out of his hands and he's kung fu kicking. Oh my god, crazy! But crazy, like I've done nothing wrong, <laughs> mate. You've kicked the ball, hobbled ten meters to try and kick someone in the back. He's like, he should, he shouldn't have been there. Oh, it was not his fault. Amazing. Uh, as I said about your wind-ups, like. What, would you like cut people's gear up in that or was it no that sort of stuff? Yeah. To be honest, I'm like, I was extreme. <clears throat> I was like, I do things, like, I do, I'd probably do gross things. Like, someone would be, someone would go into a locker and there might be a, something in it. <laughs> like, oh, fuck it. Yeah. I took it too far sometimes. Like, cut, I remember uh, Badoya. He's uh, me and him's having a bit of banter with Moedu, and he uh, he's come in with proper decent gear like chinos and stuff like that. 
And uh, I'm like, I've, I've had enough. I've had enough of this prick. So I've chopped, chopped one leg off. And he's came in, got showered, went to put on. And he's flipped out. He's like, I'm picking my family up from the airport. How am I meant to go? Yes, I don't have time. Like, I've rushed off the pitch, got a shower. And look, I, I'm going to have to go home and change. I say, I've paid 150 quid for them trousers as well. They better be in my locker when I, when I come, come back the next day. <laughs> I can't find bad. I was like, oh, yeah, well, I will. I'll, I'll give you it. I'll, no, no problem. But I uh, stuff like that there, like cutting stuff up and <laughs> probably the one, one that stands out. Was, well, it was on me, but it was the funniest. So brothers, he's in the, he's in the, med- he's in the medical room. This is Ken Brodsby, sorry. He's leg up and he's got the, you know, the compacts. Yeah. Got that on his hamstrings. So me and Mo, me and Mo and brothers has always been like, we're always like banto. It was always there. So me and Mo's in the medical room and I, uh, I turned the, the nozzle up and brothers, fucking legs went up. Like I nearly pulled his, Got a hamstring off his off the bone, <clears throat> and he's he couldn't move because he's still in the machine. Me, me, and, me and Mo's like high five each other, and brother brothers are obviously screwed loose as well. He's like, I'm not use honestly. So we went back in. Ten minutes went by, and we're all laughing and joking about it. So brothers takes the things off, finished. And he's like laughing away. Me comes over and grabs me in a headlock. Headlock. Um, brothers is solid. I've heard, he, I've heard he's a strong boy. Mate, animal. He's got me in a headlock. So he goes for me. Obviously, Mo's been involved as well. So he goes for me. And Mo's like laughing and joking. He's like, are you sorry, my friend? No, nah, I'll do it again. He's like, are, are you sorry? Mate, I'm like a... Out for the count. Huge <laughs> Out for the Mo, last thing I remember was Mo going, brothers, brothers, he's out. Out for about 15 seconds. I woke up and I thought, what the hell have you done? <laughs> Didn't even apologize. Amazing. He, like, brothers, solid man. He's absolute animal. But I, it, it was... Yeah, obviously it was on me, and it was it was probably up there the funniest. It was just how it happened. He, I think he could have, he probably would have killed me, only for more. We've had people on that have said like you were rubbing your ass up and doing the windy, and Walter Smith caught you. Was there ever a time like you came to you and went, "Listen, you're fucking too much"? I think it was in the back of back of a bus. I think it was. <laughs> we 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 get like some of the lads. We get like the physio or the masseuse drive the car to the game, and then they. Kick like head on after the game, home. So I don't know who it was, but I've obviously got my, my pants down and back window. And um, but Walter was two cars behind. <laughs> yeah. I think it was. I think uh, Poirier because we're all we would have been down playing cards at the back of the bus, but Poirier's went. Nah, there's there's a gaffer. I went, nah, I could one on. Yeah, turn around and there was Walter and his Range Rover and yeah, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> But I think he, he, he spoke to me, he just kind of wanted me to let my football do, do the talking rather than just being like this clown. Because yeah. I think back then I was a young lad, I was just like, just loved the banter and yeah. obviously I would have entered the game just normal, just going into the game and if anything happened in the game, I would have been joking about it and stuff like that there. But Nah, he spoke to me and just like, just tone it down a wee bit or two. Like, I love, love the band and all that, but just tone it down or two. Does he love, does he love a laugh though, huh? You can get a laugh on that, huh? Aye, me. He's, he's funny, that's what he said. Like, he's, he, he, he talked to me and he'd, he'd have a wee bit of, like, banter about him. And, like, the last time I spoke to him, he'd, he, just, the way he talks and the way, like, the vibe you get from him, I love, I, like, I loved it and I was, he was an amazing guy and he, he did enjoy the banter as well but I think more Koisty because Koisty was just one of the, one of the guys and 
like I respect the guy see so much for him being one of the guys in like in the around the dressing room, even though he's, he's a coach, but then making that step up to be manager. Yeah, it's, it would have been a hard thing to do because he was so into it. He was one of the boys, to be honest. Then to step up to be a manager, it, 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 it was hard. See, just on that team, obviously, it sounds like a great team spirit in that, and you've been flying, winning leagues. Would you, would you be out quite a lot in Glasgow? Um, ah, we, we will have been out a, out a bit. Um, what, no mind that now? No, nah, really not. Nah. Yeah, when you're winning trophies, left, right and centre, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> what a man. Uh, you were the man for the big occasion tour. Mate, three, three title winnings, every, every league clinching game you score. Hibs, Kelly, Hattrick, three in a row. What one's your favourite? Obviously, I'd say the, the Kelly one, obviously, for, for how it happened in seven minutes. Basically, we, we won the league. Um, and me going on to score a hat-trick, but probably, yeah, probably that one for, for, for personal note. Um, and obviously, that, would, that was the last, last um, obviously, league the Rangers won, um, SPL. But I think it was just that game. But obviously, winning the first game, the, the one that Dundee United was, was nice as well. Obviously, everything that I've came off the week before and um, we had them on the league. I think it was, was it three, three years prior to it. And yeah. We won it and just that feeling. I remember the, the bus journey down the road. Um, I've, I've never been in a celebration prior to this, to win in the league, it was like amazing. We, we stopped off at the hotel, all, all aboard, chairman, everyone is in the hotel, we're having beers. Marcus, the Marcus Beasley comes on to the bus with three crates of Red Bull and five bottles of vodka. I'm like, ah, oh, fucking hell, I guess. I might not see. Next <laughs> So <clears throat> pull up the Ibrox <clears throat> place, thousands and thousands of fans. My mom like out the window like looking. And all I remember to that day is there's this guy. Looks like bloody what do you call the guy with the, the nuts on his neck? Oh uh, Frankenstein. I mean, looking at Frankenstein, but there's no like no motion from his face. He's just like ah, boom, banging the side of the bus, off his head. I'm like, yes, lads, look at this. I'm wrong, Fritz laughing. It's just banging the bus. And um, the celebration was amazing. And we, we went out that night and we, we thought we owned Glasgow, to be fair. We, every song we sang, it was like the songs weren't like no loyal songs or anything. It was just like about players, player songs that the fans came up with. And I remember being in October. Is it October? In yeah, October. Yeah. What a boozer. Hi. I remember just sitting out in the wee balcony, the whole, just the whole Rangers players, just singing, singing, picking players and just singing their song and just getting, getting pissed, to be honest. And I was like, this is, this is amazing. And I was only 20. You were having a dream, young man, weren't you? Ah, I mean, it was amazing. Uh, see the Kelly game? Yeah. The league was so tight that year, like, can you even enjoy playing to you when the league's that tight? Can you even enjoy the games or does it just need to get this one? Um, I think after 45 seconds, we enjoyed it a lot more. Nah, I, 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 that was, I was so nervous that game. Um, obviously, we, need that, we, win, we win the league. It was, it was just, just one of them things. And it was a weird day. Um, and I was, I was like, I remember I was nervous and I remember the, the first touch I had, it, it, I flicked it on and I went past um, Jelovic and I'm like, oh, come on, man, I need to do better with that. And just, just things like that, I was, I was picking up on it and then obviously I got the goal and Nasey got his and then I got my second. It was just made it even more, more relaxing and then you can, like, I remember when we went 3-0 up, I was like, they can't score four goals. They can't even score three, honestly. They can't. We can't let it. And it was just 
keep on thinking they won't. They won't. But you're still thinking that if you know that. Uh-huh. Wow. I, mean, I remember. I was just like, we've won it, but what's the chance of them scoring four goals or three goals? I was just thinking it. I was like, then obviously the later of the game, even when they scored, I was like, oh no, checking to see how long we had left, and I was like, mm. they can't, they can't score another four. I need to ask you, mate. You played with Duke that season. Uh, how did you go, man? Yeah, he's he's funny. Like, I remember he, he's just. It was just like, it was just crazy. Like, he always wore sunglasses. I remember walking in the cabin, walking with some some of the, some of the other lads and the bouncers. I knew the bouncer, and he's like, "Oh, big Jufi's out the back." I went, "Oh, okay, don't take me to him." So we went in, and Jufi sat there in the corner, shades on like that, <laughs> champagne. Birds. Oh my god. Give me a pair of shades. Don't care what colour they are. But um, <laughs> I, I, I used to see myself sitting in the house with shades on like that. Does this look cool or not? But like <laughs> two hours before I would have seen someone in the shop and send those shades on like oh, wine girl with sunglasses on. Oh yeah. He was just he was Mr. Cool. Now I remember we're in the on the bus to a away game and uh we were talking and I, I, I love my music and I had Akon on and he goes, my bro, I went, what? It's my bro, mate, he had Akon on the phone. <laughs> no way. I mean, the, the best of pals, he had Akon on the phone. I'm like, ah, I agree, well, that's one of your pals but back home. <laughs> and mate, I was like, this guy's just living another life. That's but, amazing, man. I was like, wow. Because I, I, I grew up and Akon was probably one of my favourite like, artists. Did you, speak, did you speak to Akon? No chance. Yeah. But he was just, it, it could have been his could have been his brother on the phone, but he, all, he made everyone in the boss believe it was Akon. But then it, he was, he, they were their best pals. Like, so they are, um, so. Would you, uh, would you ever kick off in training, Duke? Like, did anyone ever have a, no, he was, pretty, he was pretty quiet, so he was. Was he right? No, I, was, I was told yeah. one story. Um, he didn't kick off nothing, but he uh, he obviously won won the league. <clears throat> and he, um, well, he won the cup or something like that. And obviously Blackburn's in, in a relegation here at the time. I think it was the Premier League. He comes into the training ground with his medal on. In the training ground, so whoever the manager was at the time, I don't think they got on well. And he's came in with the fucking medal on, so on the shoe, like screaming and shouting, like being goofy. And the manager just told them to go home because obviously like, they were getting relegated the, that year, and he's strolling through with his fucking like, SPL medal on. Oh, not giving a fuck, bro. Uh, right, let me ask you about the Celtic games, mate. Uh, did you all play in them? Loved it, man. Absolutely loved it. It was just the biggest, it's the biggest derby in the world. <clears throat> I don't care what anyone says. Like I've, I've played, I've played in many of derbies, and I played in Norwich, Ipswich, and I was pulled. I was like, this is, this is hectic. This one, so just. Calm down and always like you, you can get you can get wound up with the fans, but just you stay calm. That was out of the afternoon teammate. I was like, oh, come on here. I was like, oh. I was like quiet. I was like, nah. I actually took the piss out after the game. I was like, I mean, how can you pull me to say this is hectic? It's absolutely it's like a Sunday league game. But um was, so your first one, though, so your first Celtic Rangers, how um, how can, can you enjoy the game at all, or is it just total panic for ninety minutes? I was I was on the bench, and I think we won four two. Pedro Pedro scored the, the the one from the edge of the box, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, I remember just them goals going in. I was down warming up, and I'm on top of on top of them celebrating. And I'm like, oh my god, this is incredible. Um, it was just 
amazing and oh, Celtic Park, Celtic Park as well, just it was just absolutely perfect. Obviously it made it even better coming coming away with the three points, but like back then you, you had the eight eight and a half thousand fans as well. Mm-hmm. And it was like I've always said the Rangers fans are so much better at Celtic Park. And the Celtic fans are so much better at Ibrox. That was when you had eight eight and a half thousand. And it was just it was the atmosphere was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always said it like the away team's fans were always so much better because obviously you're you're in your rivals back backyard, so you obviously want to make as much noise as possible. And like the away fans made so much more noise than the home fans. Have you got a, have you got a favourite one that stands out? Favourite game? Uh, nah. But, Probably the the one I scored won the kneecap and it took six deflections off the players and <laughs> when <it's finished> off. <laughs> nah, like, that was that, that was probably the one right we went on to win the game then and I played a part obviously it was I needed and then went took six deflections went in and I've run off like I've won the World Cup to be honest but I was just running across running along the touchline and Giving the Celtic fans the the ear and all that, and it was just just one of them things. Like I grew up doing, like all I wanted to do, like the rivalry. Which, yes, everyone knows what the rivalry was like, and you just just wanted to wind up the like the Celtic fans. So, was there a player that you used to enjoy winding up on Celtic's team? I mean, everyone's probably going to think I'm going to say Scott Brown, right? But it's always I don't know what. Why it was always like me and Scott Brown. It was always like having wee niggles and like nibbles with each other and like fights. But like Scott's probably one of the nicest guys off the pitch. He's just so in the winning. Mm. He does that, does anything for his team, and he's he's a born winner. That's why he's one of the greatest Celtic players and captains. But it was always it always ended up me and him. <laughs> Would you speak to each other? Would you give each other a bit verbally? Like, no, not really, no. Nah. Um, it was always just, it was always just like a tackle, and we'll have a scuff, and then mm. I got him sent off like once or twice, and it was just like it was always me and him. That was always like. Getting involved with each other, yeah. um, like it was nothing personal towards him. It was just one of them things. But like, I, like I was totally. I've, I've spoke to him a few times off the pitch, like um, when Northern Ireland played Rangers, and he, like we spoke before the game, or when Northern Ireland played Scotland at Hamden, we spoke before the game and stuff like that. There, and he was just, he was just a. He's just a born winner and done anything to win the games. And I was just, back then, I was just a daft lad that wanted to win as well. Wanted to, like, show how much playing against Celtic and beating Celtic was meant to me. Uh, so it was just, like, I was always involved in the stupid wee things. Right, mate, last wee bit on Walter Smith, because he leaves after this. Uh, ask every player who's played under him, what's the maddest you've ever seen him go and addressing them? Um, it, probably a way that it was like it didn't really go mental. Like Walter never really went off his head. It was just like if he had any negative words towards anyone or a, towards a team, you know that you're you're miles off it because it's Walter Smith, and he, he never really slags anyone off or anything. But I remember coming off half time. Um, I think we were 1-0 down against Aberdeen and I'm, I'm thinking I've done alright I've won one headers and all this so he he says something to me and then Davey Weir he, he says something and I've, I didn't like it and I went you win your fucking headers at the back so Davey, Davey stood up and he's like what? I went win your headers? So, but he's obviously went and said the same to me. He's like, "Fucking win your headers," 
I'm thinking, I've done, I've done all right here. Mm-hmm. So things calmed down. And Walters went, laugh, you can take your boots off. What? No way. So I was like, fucking hell. So, like, I'm raging. Took my boots off, flung them down. Um, but that, that night, we were flying to Manchester for a Christmas party. Manchester, Liverpool for a Christmas party. So we're obviously flying, so I'm in the worst mood ever. One, I've spoke back to Davy Weir. Something I, I'd, I'd never, I'd never do. So I've, and then obviously taken off at half time. So obviously I've pulled Davy at the airport and I apologise. I was like, listen, I'm, you know, I respect you so much. And what, what I said was, was out of order. I said, listen, forget about it. So we went on and had a great night. But that was probably the only thing Walter ever, ever done. Didn't shout to you, just obviously, to Think he took you off because of your performance or because you answered Davy Beer back? Answer Davy. Yeah, I think. Yeah, because I mean, I thought I'd done all right. I thought I, was, I came off the pitch, obviously losing one nil. I think, obviously, got it. But I thought I've, I'm not right here. Like, I'll, if I continue the second half, we'll get a chance and to like scoring. But I thought, yeah, I, I'm sure it was because I spoke back to Davy. Obviously, Davy's obviously fucking Davy Weir as well. And just speaking back to, to to a senior player like that, the way I did, I think it was it was that, and obviously I was I was gutted as well for the way I spoke. Not gutted, I was took off, but gutted the way I, I spoke to Davy as well because yeah. he was he was a great guy as well. And then Walter's but you got a bit Walter left. Ali takes over. Did you did you think Ali was capable of going and being the manager? You said obviously like to crack in that, but did you think he was capable of stopping that and being a different guy? Yeah, well, Koisty would take the. The league cup, cup game, yeah. He obviously, he obviously got used to it, and he, he was getting experience there, and like he, he he done well. Like um, obviously everything that happened to the club, but he was he probably took over the worst time for for a young manager. Um, but he done he done well. He, he the training was good. He he spoke to the players, and he still tried to. He didn't like distance himself completely away from the team. He still had his wee moments among the among the lads, and it, it made everyone more more relaxed. That you could obviously still have that banter and stuff like that there. So it was, it was good. But yeah, Coisty, I think he done well. He, it, it's just a bit harsh the timing and everything that came with the job at the time. How, how horrible was that atmosphere when it was like the financial meltdown? Was it a hard place to be? Yeah, it was. It was difficult. I mean, we were. We beat 12 or 14 points clear at the time. And then Celtic, they won the league maybe by 10. It's like that, that turnover, it was like, we always saw, we always said as a player, like, we'll not, we'll not let everything that's happened off the pitch affect the performances on the pitch. When we, everything went against us. Mm. Like we still had the fans, we still had the same players and everything like that, but we just couldn't win a game. Just couldn't do anything right. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a terrible time to be part of the club, and it was just everyone. Everyone didn't know. Like we didn't know what was happening. We were being told lie after lie from the administrators and stuff like that. There, like we all took a pay cut, which lined their pockets. Didn't help the club at all. So it was just a difficult time. That it was. It was. It was a sad time, and obviously the way the way I left the club, it was a sad time, and I wish I had better people looking after me. And well, as in, as in what agent wise? Agent wise, like he he just wanted me out of there straight away, and like I remember we went to the administration, and the first game after first game after obviously we've went in the same season. I'm driving down the road. Came down the Clyde Tunnel, it turned left around about seeing fans, and then when, I, when I'm coming up closer to the stadium, the fans, like the fans turn out in numbers the next game to support the club. I mean, I'm in tears. I'm driving down the road in tears because I'm like, this is my club. And like, 
everything has happened to it. We don't know what's going to happen to the club. We don't know what's happened to the players or what happened. But I was like, fuck yeah, I'm driving down the road in tears and I sat in the car to sort myself out in the car park. Um, we parked across in the school behind gates. I sat in the car trying to like sort myself out so no one knew I was crying. Driving down that road, I was like just absolutely devastated. Well, just because you knew what, you could see what was going to happen to the club? I was just, just that feeling, like, it was just that feeling of the club going in the administration, mm. reading things in the press, in the paper and stuff like that there. It was just like, ah, I can't believe this is, this is happening. And mm-hmm. wow. did, you, did you ever have any dealings with Craig White? Um, nah. Well, I, I spoke to him, like, didn't really speak spoke to him. Like, Craig White came in, he's, everyone thought he's came in to help the club. So I've, I've seen him in the tunnel after warming, warming down, cooling down, I'd shake his hands and stuff like that there. But obviously, everyone thought he came in to help the club out, but he just, he just came in, like every other person came in after that to, to make a bob or two. And he didn't, didn't respect the, the club, the name or the fans. So it was just one of them things that yeah, I, have no, I have no time, time for him. See, for first, like your first three great years, like how, how sad was it to end your, your Rangers career like that? It was terrible. Like, it, just the way I left, like, for years after, like, it was, was it 2013, was it, 2012, I left. And every single day I thought, why have I done it? I could definitely have stayed, played on. Still well, probably, as it, what you wish you'd have stayed in, I, and I wish I had a, a stayed. I, I, I wish I had a stayed. I, 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 I wish I, I wish I never played for another team other than Rangers. I was and just, why, Jen, And it was it was that all down to your agent? Yeah, he, he, he's obviously came in and he's he had bigger, better things for me, he earned more money and stuff like that. There, and I was just like, he was. He got in my head. But deep down, I didn't. I didn't want to leave. I was happy to stay, stay in the, the lower leagues, work my way up, and like Lee Wallace done it, and mm. he he sacrificed his international career to play for Rangers. And I, I look at Lee, and I'm thinking he's just for the way he was treated within the club. Obviously, the way he left, it's just like the way. This guy deserves so much better. Yeah. Even when I went back, he was just like, this guy's spent the toughest years of Rangers in, in a Rangers shirt. He didn't worry about earning another pound or two. He stuck it out. He became a Rangers uh, captain, a Rangers great. And he's, I wish I was one of them. Like, I wish I had a, like stayed. I was a young lad. I, I should have stayed in... I regret it to the day. Wow. Uh, right. You went abroad a few places. Sion, Palermo, uh, Rissaspor. I want to ask you about uh, Gattuso. Uh, Sion. How, how was it? You've got a story in it. Yeah, Gattuso's brilliant. He, he, he's up there. He's, he's like Fergie. He's, he's a player's captain. Anything's wrong. He's straight to the man. straight to the the board straight to the manager to sort things out for the players. Like at Christmas, uh, maybe a month, two months before Christmas, he got got the one of the younger lads go around taking everyone's sizes. Oh my God, what's this for? So leading up to Christmas, he's uh, he's got all the players, trainers, Italian-made trainers with their squad number and the Sion badge on it and a bathroom for the showers and flip-flops and like the company that made them they, they made uh, shin pads and all that so it, it cost cost a, like, cost a bit so it didn't, but it's just little things like that that he'd go out and do and he'd always look after the players and he was brilliant but a uh, story so obviously warming up doing ladders and I'm I'm at the back. Gattuso's at the front. We're in the same line. There's two lines. I'm in the, I'm in the same line as Gattuso. And he's I'm talking to the people behind. And he's like, Kylie! Oh, come on. I'm like, aye, 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 aye. 
So we're doing an average. Still talking. Like, oh, you, come on, fuck's sake. Well, I am fucking doing them. So he's coming up and I'm going through the ladders and he's smacked me in the chest. He's like, oh, finishes here. I'm like, aye, aye, Jesus, fucking hell. Relax, man, I'm fucking only warming up. So um, mate, two or three days later, I've had to go see the doctor. I'm like this. Doc, I, I can barely breathe, man. He's like, so the doctor, he, he can speak a wee bit of English. He's like, you okay? I went, I don't know. I'm, my chest, I'm, I can barely breathe, honestly. Any, any, any breath I take, I'm, I'm in agony. So he's like, okay, we'll go, you, you don't train today, we'll, we'll go to the, the hospital. Mate, I fractured my fucking chest bone. I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm thinking, but the doctor, did he take a hit? I'm thinking back to the game. I'm thinking, nah, what the game, man? I'm sure he would have felt like a thump in my chest. I was like, nah, and boom. I went, Doc, the other day in training, Gattuso's hit me like a slap in my chest, but like it kind of like winded me, but it was fine. He's like, ah. He's so, well, he's fucking fractured with a chest bone. Well, I slap. And he's like, aye. I'm going to go, I'm going to go and tell him. Because me, like me and, me and Reno had a great relationship. He's tried to sign me for, for, for the team, three other teams he's played for, Pisa and teams like that. He's tried to sign. And I, to be yeah. fair, when, he's, when he got the AC Milan job, he, he did get a text. <laughs> <laughs> What was the response? What was the response to the text? He just laughed. <laughs> that, that's when I thought, nah, fuck you then. But nah, but we, we, me and Reno had a great relationship. Um, obviously his wife's from Glasgow and he, that Rangers link as well. Um, so he, I was like, oh, I'm going to go and t- tell him. Doctor, no, 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 don't tell him. Because if you show any pain, mate, he'd, he'd keep on hitting you. <laughs> honestly, he he. he Keep on doing it because you, you've, you've missed training because of a refracture. I can barely breathe. But he's, he's, he's became manager of Sion. So I'm like, this is me before a game in a hotel eating sweets. No, sorry, it was pre season actually. We're in Austria. It was um, like pre season. There's no junk at all, no, no junk crisp or anything. And they hate it, don't they? The Italians hate it, man. Aye, but but you, you're allowed a glass of red wine. You're drinking <laughs> a bottle of red wine for a game, but you're not allowed to buy chocolate. <laughs> That's mad, isn't it? So, there's a wee shop, maybe by five kilometres down the road. So me and my roommate went, listen, let's go down to the shop. We say we'll we'll take the bags and we'll let on we run for a cycle. And we'll tuck the crisp and chocolate around our waistband. So I've filled myself with milk and chocolate. So I... Uh, I've stuck it down the side of my bed. So I'm out. I'm out with some other lads. And Katushos came into my room looking for me. I don't know what for. To this day, I still don't know. But he's in speaking to the guy and he's, he must have walked around the side of my bed and he's found this a sweet shop down the side. But he, did, he, he, he didn't take it all. He only left half of it. So I've come back to my room. My roommate didn't, didn't say nothing. Now I've got a text, text message. Lafferty, come down to the dinner room, down to dinner, the dining area. I went, ah, okay. So I've strolled down. And we've always had like, there was never probably a serious conversation with me and Mino. It was always banter. I'd always have a wee bit of banter with him. So I've came strolling down. I was like, what's happening, guys? Enjoying the pint? Yeah, the cloth comes across my sweets. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I don't know. Is that for me? Are you treating me? No, no, no. This we this we don't joke about. Well, I, I've never seen them before. <laughs> but, so the, the the other ten bars of chocolate, they're not yours beside your bed. I went, nah, gaffer, someone stitching me up. <laughs> so he's he honestly he's, he's, he's went 
mad at me. Um, but it was it was funny, just just little things like that. Um, well, he was a top guy, brilliant guy. Um, I, he uh, he's he's obviously went on, and he had a tough time in Sion and Palermo, and um, but he's he's kicked on. He's now he's done well at AC, and he's he's doing very well at Napoli as well now. He's won that cup, didn't he? Amazing man. That's man. tremendous. Angry wee guy. All uh, right, mate. Just a wee bit about the Euro 2016. Amazing time for Northern Ireland. Uh, what's your best memories of that that tournament? Uh, Bobby, just just honestly, just being there, we we were like got off the plane and we we're like treated like kings. Things like like you're driving the, the bus, you're driving down the road, and there's there's three police vans in front and three behind, and like the roads are being cleared first. Honestly, we we're treated like kings. Wow. Just to get from A to B. I remember driving, and there was a car stopped like on a roundabout. Broke down on a roundabout, and we've had, we've had to stop. So the bus has stopped. Doors flung open. The police is out running down past the bus with the guns. And there's a wee woman in the car. Mate, she must have shat herself. <laughs> she broke down the roundabout. Sat there, and I mean, she's surrounded by twenty police officers with guns. So we've moved on. Even like going to shops, like. We we hadn't we hadn't had any like sweets or chocolate for for a few days, and I've said to the fitness coach, "Listen, the lads are deserve a bar of chocolate, Christy, and like some snacks." And he's like, "Okay, okay, let let us let us ring ahead." So after training, we've we've came into the supermarket, mate. Whoever was in the shopping centre was locked in, and whoever was out wasn't allowed in, and we've been took into the back door, done not Done our wee rounds of shopping, and then back out. The whole place was just closed down. And obviously, that's that was out obviously away from the football, but just it was amazing for for the country of our size to get there and to play against Germany, Poland, and Ukraine. And obviously, getting out of that group, it was, it was an achievement that went on further than our expectations. Um, it was it was amazing. How do you keep yourself entertained? Like, because international, it's a lot of time in, it, in the hotel. Seeing some of the things you did with the Sky Sports reporter and that was it. Just constant trying to wind people up. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was like just at, at the Euros, like they had a massive, like we, we, it was like a like a big farmhouse, but it was a hotel. It was all booked out, just us on it, and it was like the whole surroundings area was was all covered by the police. We had a big games room, dartboard, PlayStation pool table and it was the whole walls were like pictures of us and like yeah. during games and then just um, selfies and all so stuff I got there was amazing and there was like a massive uh, TV with like the fans we'd hashtag on Twitter and it'd, it'd appear up on the TV and we'd be able to watch them so that we'd obviously be in there but leading up to the Euros it was just like pure banter like when I'd done the one of those with the shoes. I mean, see about five minutes after that, we're walking down the road in uh, in Finland. We're walking down the road and someone stops us to chat. And obviously it was a Finnish player or a Finnish person. So we did be just like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it was brilliant, yeah. Um, thanks, and we're walking down. Five seconds after, Police just came out of a junk, or sorry, like, the police just came out of a junction, but they broke a red light, and a, a, a car was just coming down the road, straight back in, straight into the side of this car. Made the car went across the road. See if we didn't speak, to, stop to speak to them. That those uh, Finnish people straight into, and so we were like, we come up the road, fucking what? What happened? And we, we were seeing Paul Gilmore in the Sky Sports, and we're like, man, should have seen that. Like, we nearly got wiped out. Only for stopping us speaking to some Finnish people, I tell you how we would have been killed. Wow. That's a joke. Imagine that being headline breaking news. Six to one Ireland players have been crushed. So we're just <laughs> having a, oh my God, he's want to do an interview for like, obviously Sky Sports, we're like, aye, aye, aye. And then obviously it's, 
the playing Messi and Ronaldo and all that came about and, and I was like what does he wear so I just rolled and done that but yeah, yeah it was a great group of guys with the Northern Ireland it's, it's always been like it's always been a group uh, amazing group of guys even even for a younger lad coming through we're always it, it was probably made easier to come into a team um, obviously I made feel welcome because we're we, yeah, the last 16 tie against Wales it was so tight like do you, do you look back and think what if I mean it was absolutely awful like Big G had a, an amazing campaign scored against Ukraine <clears throat> and then obviously the own goal which was absolutely devastating obviously there was someone behind the top of the anyway but I felt for him obviously scoring the own goal to put us out but it was just one of them it was just heartbreaking that we absolutely battered them played them played them in a friendly before as well like a couple of months or a year before we, we battered them as well and we just we just knew that like every, leading up to it we, 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 we knew I think we could have played France or something everyone was like oh, love to play France and there was only a handful of us like nah fucking wheels mate we battered wheels we, we want to go like as far as possible and we, we, we're doing we were playing so well and like every, I think everyone just had in the back of their heads like Greece was it 2000 when they they won the Euros yeah. like They've came from the underdogs, and everyone was just thinking, "This could be us, man." We they even get into like the semis or even the final, or it'd be amazing. And obviously, getting getting knocked out by by Wales, a team that we were capable of beating, it was just disappointing. We spoke to Joe Ledley; he's been on here, and he said that Wales was basically like their camp was basically like a stag do. Like you could have a pint in that. We used similar, or was it no drinking? It was. After a game, we could we could have one or two. Well, obviously, after the Wales game, like there was after the Wales game, it was just like let loose, and uh, there was always like three security guards that always came with us. If two of us wanted to go to the shop, one of them would come with us. It was like, but they'd always carry guns, and they're like top guys. Like you don't mess with these guys. So they started drinking as well. They, they just, like, we were flying home ne- two days later, next day or whatever. So like we, we got friendly with them. And we were always chatting and they're like, ah, wait, give us 10 minutes and we'll come back. So like, what can I do? They're bringing more drink. There's loads here. Mate, they've came back with all their guns. <laughs> all the night, night vision goggles. Big guns, everything. Obviously, not loaded. <laughs> we're in we're in this room. <laughs> Again, we're like Rambo, night vision goggles, guns. <laughs> That's amazing, man. Fish. Michael Neal sitting there, and I went up to Michael, and I went <laughs> to his head. Do you regret drop drop me against Ukraine now, you prick? Um, we're thinking back to it, I was like, yeah, what, what's going on, man? Like, <laughs> honestly, you we were absolutely, it was mental. Oh, it's amazing, man. Must have had about 10 guns, and we're all absolutely steaming, holding these guns, thinking we're ready. <laughs> oh, it was, it was oh, mate, I love that, man. Love that. Uh, right, and then Hearts. What's your story about Hearts, mate? Because it looked like you were going to go hits at one stage. Yeah, how close it was that to happen? I mean, the Hibs and the Hearts thing was was mental. Like, um, so obviously Austin, Austin McPhee, Nor- yeah. all the Northern Ireland and stuff I got there. I do's, and he spoke to me, and he said, "Would you come?" I went. At, 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 at the start, I didn't really. I like, no disrespect, to Austin, because me and him get on well. We we and he's helped me massively throughout my gamble and helped me probably one of the main reasons I've been able to stop and stuff so he's I'm trying to I'm probably fobbing him off so I came came from like Norwich Premier League club shitload of money to heart I'm thinking aye aye hit me up whenever <laughs> after after the international camp I hit me up no problem <laughs> he's texting me I'm like, aye 
I speak to me agent, just fobbing him off to, to me agent, Martin. And then we met up to the next camp and he's, uh, he's speaking to me. He's like, listen, I think it'll, it'll be amazing for you, man. We'll, I think we can tick a lot of boxes for you. So I went, well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go and, I'll, for you, since I respect you, I'll go and speak, go and speak to the club. From I was, I, mean, I was four days at heart from from ten o'clock till five o'clock, four days every single day. Doing what? Trying to negotiate a contract. Trying to like, I've I went in, told them this is what I want. And Bodge Craig Levine's Luke no man. Fucking hard to take my piss. He's off. Wouldn't even get this at Rangers or Celtic. I went. This, this is what I obviously want. I came from back in Norwich. I'm not taking a hit this much. So I want this. So I've left back and forth trying to get me clauses in the contract and all this. Left. Not, that's me finished. So I'm, I'm, I've got Hibs interested as well. So I'm speaking to Hibs as well. Um, spoke to Neil Lennon. I was like, on the phone, he's like, come and speak to me. Don't do anything until you speak to me. I was like, well, okay, I'll give you my word. I won't come. after." So I'm, I'm going to Hearts in the morning again to speak. I, I, I'm going to Hearts. If it doesn't work out, I'll come across. He's like, no, 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 you can't come. You can't come tomorrow. I'm flying out to Magaluf for summer with, uh, with a go- like for a golfing trip. I think I'm nearly sure it was Gordon Strachan's birthday. Come on, man. I'm, I'm, you want to sign me? I'm telling you, I'm coming across. But you're like putting me off because you're going to a piss off for a golfing trip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'll give you my word. Before I say, before I do anything, if, if I agree terms with Hearts, I'll, I'll let you know. So, second day in Hearts, trying to fix things, back and forth, not happening. Third, so I've, I've missed one day. Because I think they were off or something like that. Got a phone call saying, "I said, can you come across again?" I was like, "Yeah, hell, I'm, I'm, I've done, I've already done half a preseason here already." So I've went across. We we said, "If we don't do it tonight, if we don't do, if we don't agree something, then that's it." I'm, I'm obviously talking to other people. Left, doors closed. So eleven o'clock at night. So sorry, I've spoke of. Text, text Neil saying, listen, I, I'm, I can come and see you. So at 11 o'clock, I get a phone call from the agent. Hearts think they can, they've, they've sorted something out. They want you in the morning. I went, oh, my dad. I spoke to Lennon. I'm going across to speak to him. He's like, listen, we can't, we can't spend three days in Hearts and then obviously patch him. I was okay, let me, let me sort things out. So I spoke to Neil. He said, listen, I'm speaking to Hearts in the morning. They seem to think they've managed something, but... The way the last three days it went, it's not going to happen. So I've uh, met up with Hearts. I uh, met up with Hearts, speaking, everything. So everything I've asked for, Hearts were like, nah, they, they, they can't do it. I've got the Hearts that on the fourth day, and they've offered me more. Wait, but yes, offer me more. <laughs> Martin, wow. Martin was double check this. I think there's something wrong. So Martin's went. So you're offering this, this bonus payment, this, this. This is correct. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah everything. This is all correct. We double check. I'm like, this is the, what's going on here. Wow. I've actually, to get things across the line, I actually had a clause in my contract. It hurts. Oh, I backed myself massively. So Hearts would pay me X, Y, and Z. If I didn't, if I didn't get a move the next season, I'd have to pay them a quarter of a million out of my own pocket. No way. I- I just had this feeling about hearts. When I was there, I was like, like uh, Scott Gardner was there. 
he, he made me, me and my missus, uh, me and my missus, welcome. I was like, yeah, th this is this club's amazing. So to get things over the line, I was like, listen, if I don't do well and I'm stuck here next season, I'll have to pay a quarter of a million. That can be from my own pocket or through a transfer fee. So they're like, well, okay. So I've obviously bent it over backwards as well. They've paid me what I've wanted. And then if things don't work out, they'll get a percentage of it back. Yeah. So it turned out I went on and had the best season I've had. And then Rangers obviously want to buy me. But at hearts, there was obviously a, a sign of two years, but it was always they'd sell me. But if, if I'd done shit and no one wanted me, I'd stay, but I'd be down to the standard contract hearts would offer players. Right. So I was like, right, okay. But I was always thinking, if I do shit, someone abroad will, will always do well abroad. Someone will offer 250 grand. Yeah. So I'm fine. Even if it came off my, my salary or something abroad, I'll, 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 do, I'll be fine. So got, got to the thing, Hearts wanted to keep me. But then obviously Rangers came in, I'm thinking, nah, I, I wanted to stay at Hearts as well because everything has happened, it, it, it was just amazing. But Rangers came. They, they were the only team I would have left. No, no matter. Did Lenny, did Lenny say, did you speak to Lenny again after that? So, the way it worked out, there's an agent from Northern Ireland. Like, that's Chris, uh, Keith Gillespie and Brian Adair is. So they've, they've, uh, they spoke to me. And like, I was like, listen, see if you bring something to the table. Me and my agent will look at it. And you, you can, like, you can talk, talk to the club. So they flew over that day to be ready to, to get involved with Hibs as well, with, with me and my agent. Because they kind of brought Hibs to the table right at the start. So they're in they're at the Hibs training ground waiting for me. So they're texting, they're texting me agent, what's happening? I'm like, nothing's been agreed yet, but it's close. So I think the paperwork's getting done. I've... Uh, and Budgers went, listen, will we get the will we get the press out the way? So it's so if you sign, everything's all done. While we get the paperwork, you can like sort that out. So I was like, aye, aye, whatever. So I'm there, hard strip on, Lafferty Nine on the back. The stadium in the background's being the stand in the background's being built. Someone's take, took a picture and put it on Twitter. So this is got to the Hibs has obviously seen this so the agent's texting me texting me agent saying thanks for the heads up how you've how you've treated us is bang out of order I'm replying saying listen things haven't I haven't signed yet but we're close so they're like nah you're taking a piss so this this is when they've took a picture of Lennon Keith Gillespie and the agent and put it on Twitter saying, where's Lafferty? So this is... I did not see it. No, so this, I it us. this is Kim all about. So they've put it on Twitter, where's Lafferty? So, obviously, I've signed, told the agents, listen, I'm signing and all this. So things didn't go down well with them too. And uh, Obviously, I met Lennon in a film station, uh, Hart Hill. Uh, it was actually... We played, we played them, we, we, we played Hibs. And then I met Lennon a couple of days after in Hart Hill Stone Station. I was like, oh, are you Neil, are you okay? He's like, aye, I'm good. They've just beat us in the, in the game. Right. Uh, he's like, how, how are you? I'm like, I'm, I'm good, obviously. Disappointing after the game. He's like, aye, it was a good game, but. So he's paid for his petrol or whatever, and he's, went, he's leaving. He's like, all the best, big man. Told you you should have signed for me, didn't you? I think. <laughs> Aye. Well, like, Neil is good. He's a, he's a good guy, obviously. He tried to sign me for Bolton as well when he was there, and he's the only the only team he sh hasn't tried to sign me for is Celtic. So <laughs> I'm, I'm <waiting> for <laughs> I don't think that'll be happening, mate. 
<laughs> just to say no to it. But no. Nah. Right. I need to ask you, mate. Obviously, Catherine was a massive appointment for Hearts as well. How, how did you find him? I, I don't know. He, no. I think he's he's very clued on with the football, yeah. but he's quiet. He keeps himself to himself. So when I signed, there was this was mental. This is probably the, the worst, the one of the craziest thing I've seen before a game. So we were flying over to Belfast to play Linfield. We were playing playing down in Dublin first, and travelling up to play Linfield. And uh, day bef- the night before the game. I get a phone call. Gaffer wants to see you. Jimmy Walker, Gaffer wants to see you. Big Ismail, you wanna Gaffer wants to see you. So I've I've walked in and Austin and Cathy was there. And Cathy goes to, to Austin, he goes, Do you find the place? And Austin's went, Ah, there's a wee bruiser across the road, but a few people in it. He's like, I'm gonna have to make this for a man to you. So Catherine goes, what do you want? And I've been, no, nah, I'm fine. I've, I've got water up in the room. This is this is 8 o'clock at night. We're playing Linfield at 3 o'clock the next day. And Austin's when whiskey. I fucking whiskey. I've never tasted whiskey in my life before. The only, th- actually did, the only time I had whiskey was you'd put the hot water, the sugar, and the wee cloves. Oh, yeah. Hot potty. I used to have one of them. I'm like, no, nah, be off your head. Um, he's like, no, no, no. You want something? So Esmail, he's like, hey, I'll take a whiskey. So me and Jamie, whiskey. So the five are sitting there with a whiskey. And he, so he's speaking to us. He's like, right, see us three. See you three there. You are going to be hearts this season. You are going to score 65, 70 goals. So we're like, ah, oh, we are, because we actually done all right in pre-season. So whiskey's came, his meal's fucking drinking his hand. Like, oh, fucking raw whiskey, man, Jesus. So he's talking. Turned out we scored about twenty-three goals, and I got nineteen of them. <laughs> like fucking <laughs> whiskey again. But me, honestly, sitting, we're sitting down with the manager in Austin. Whiskey before a game, oh my god, I had an absolute shocker. I think Jimmy had, well, I had a shocker, and I'm like, fuck, nah, never, never drink a whiskey again. Was he good coaching wise? He was, he like, he was, he was, he was very tactical. Like, when I was speaking to the horse for the four days, oh, sorry, the three days, every day he'd have the light, the laptop, he'd hand me a laptop with all my goals I've scored. Wow. Ah, he's like, this, this is what I want you to do. This is every single goal you've scored in your career. You're going to replicate it and score for hearts. I was like, I watch these on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> what about after a game? Like, could he crack in that? Nah, no, I never heard him raise his voice. Oh, really? Jake, that was maybe the problem. I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah, maybe. Because he, like, he's, he's a wee guy and he's, he's so polite and. Like, I'd never do it, but he, he, you'd be like one of them. Like, if he fucking said something to you, you'd like sit down, would you? He, he got there. Yeah, it was a weird, weird like atmosphere. Like, see if he came in and he went went through players, you'd be like, but he was like, yeah. it was always if he played shite, it was always we've done well. It was, it was just. We didn't get the rub of the green. And we're all sitting there thinking we were shite. <laughs> but he's, like, I mean, he's he's in the Premier League now, working under yeah, really. the guy at Wolves, and he's he's well respected there. And he's he, he was in Portugal before, so I, I think I think it's he's more than a manager. I think behind the scenes and it's it's strange. Because he's he's into everything, he'll know everything about. He's a clever guy. He's a clever guy. In so much detail, which for a manager, I don't know if if he takes too much of his time mm. getting into the smallest wee detail rather than concentrating on the bigger picture. 
Do you remember the game that he got uh, his last game? You remember who beat his young man? Peter Head. Yeah, wasn't it? What, 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 was the what was that in the League Cup, wasn't it? Uh, was it away from home, wasn't it? Or, or home? Uh, up at Peter Head, mate, you could uh, you I don't think you could believe you were playing there, eh? Wait, did I, I think I cracked my head open. Uh, you did, actually. Aye, I did, I Cracked my head open. Welcome to the Lord, to the Lord League, young man. What a bit. Oh, it was... That was mental. That cup... It's the only cup I've ever known that if you draw a game, you go in the panel and get an extra point. <laughs> Brilliant. Right then, Craig Levine comes in, mate. Um, he's had a lot of stick recently. Uh, what's your experience like working under him? He's a hard ball, like... Yeah, I've always had banter with all the managers. Like, if I, if I felt comfortable with them, I'm always, I'm always bantering them. And like, Craig at the time, he, he was like, like the sporting director. Mm. And he, he'd, co- he'd come to every training session. And like, I've, I've obviously playing against Craig's team and some of his teams before and being in the office with him for four days, there was obviously spending fucking eight hours a day with him. You, you, there was banter in the room, even with Ann Budge. So there was like, <clears throat> so I, I took that on to throughout the, the year. So he, um, he'd come to training and stand there with his umbrella or just his dog and he'd be where he looked like, what do you call him? Steve Irwin, with his whole outfit, like skin color outfit, head to toe with, with flip flops. I'm like, you're expecting the sun to go off to the beach and all that. I'd be hitting them with all sorts of lines. Well, and would you have a laugh back here? Nothing. It used to be like... <laughs> no expression at all. It was like, wow, Jesus. Maybe I've took this guy the wrong way. But <laughs> like, even in like, training, I'd uh, have a bit of banter and like, try and banter him up. But he was just like, not taking me on. No. Was it was he like was he the total difference to Cathro in terms of after the game if you had now had not played well would he let you know straight away? Aye, they, not so much like went crazy, but he would have like he would have he would have picked a few players out if they weren't performing and stuff get there. Um, but like I, I was told that like, he's not as he's not as mental as he was at Hearts when I was there as previous years before because I remember reading that someone can see the goal in the head but his bloody teammates like that. <laughs> no, this isn't the same guy so it was just a- okay. uh, see I ask this question everyone that plays for them as well you've, you've mentioned that why, why, why are they such a big club you said why do you enjoy it so much then mate it was just like hearts are like they're like labelled like the Rangers cousins the Rangers brother, the half brothers, and stuff like that. There, like so, the, that that connection with Rangers is always it's a, it's, it was always there, and it's always in the back of my mind. But I went in, and I was I was me and Vanessa was like welcomed by Scott Gardner, who made a massive impression on me, and probably from the first day, I was like, I want to be here because uh, I got on so well with Scott. So it was just. He took me through, throughout the, it took me around the club, seeing the statue of the, the, the soldiers, the, the players that went to the war, and I think only two or three returned, and just seeing that statue, and seeing the, 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 the wall, the garden, Memorance garden, the people, like fans, and past and present players, would have a plaque in the wall, and just, just, Something that the, the, the fans and people that's been at the club is still part of the club. Big wall, with metal plaques, and it's like, wow. And got a big, like, poppy sign and all, and stuff like that there. So I was like, club's actually amazing. So it was just the feeling of the club and the people involved in it. It was just like, ah, I was, this is, this is a good club. And that's why I think I probably took the claws out of the quarter of a million if it didn't do well. Because I wanted so I wanted to play for the club so badly. Yeah. I didn't, didn't want to leave the club. It was obviously only Rangers took me away from them. 
That was feels unbearable as well. That to play. I I used to hate playing against them. I used to like because the fans were they're on top of you, and they're so they're mental. And I remember playing against them for Rangers. I was like, oh, fuck you know, going to Tyne Castle, man. The fans are so bad. They they cane you about everything. And being on the flip side of that, the fans were brilliant with me. Mm. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and I, obviously been doing so well for the club has obviously played a part as well. And, um, they they have a they hate Celtic. Against Celtic from her. Um, they took to me and made that. Yeah, so it was good. It was good. It was. I'm. I'm talking. I'm, you're probably saying, I, I'm, he's such a bigot." All I'm talking about is beating Celtic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some boy. Oh, did you ever think that? See, when you were on fire at Hearts, say maybe when you scored so many goals, did you think Rangers might come back in for me here? Was that? What you, were you hoping for that? There was. There was. There was whispering in the background, and I, I was go, like, I was. I was. I think it was a Sunday. I got a phone call from my agent. But on the Tuesday, I was flying to Seoul to, to speak to them, basically signing FC right. Seoul. All done. And it was so much more money, life changing money. I was in Costa in the fort with my family. Martin's rang me and I went, What's happening? He, um, he goes, oh, How do you feel about going back to Rangers? I went, shut up, mate. He went, no, seriously. They've offered this. I went, less than hearts. I went, aye. Do less than hearts. Less than hearts. Less than hearts. Hearts, but, but hearts went way and beyond to sign me. Mm. But, it was, so less than hearts. I went, get it done. So I've come off the phone. Like a Cheshire cat smiling, my missus and her mum, mother in law, she went, Are you so happy? I went, So they, they're Rangers fans as well. My missus was in Manchester. I found a box with Rangers strips, or her strips and all. So I went, How do you feel, it? How do you feel about going to Ibrox and supporting me? She went, Shut up. I went, Aye. She went, No way. I went, I've. I think it's, I think it's gonna happen. So uh, it's just like that feeling again was just like wow. So it was the Rangers was only gonna be the only team. That was obviously what I left Hearts for, because um, they they needed to sell me because I was obviously I took a massive pay cut as well for the second year because that was in the clause. So it was just like one of them things that I basically had to leave to help the club out. To try and did it better that Gerard was at Rangers, or did that no matter to you? Um, so I was speaking of, I was speaking to Stephen Gerard, like leaning up, and Hearts were being a wee bit difficult, letting me go to Rangers and stuff like that. There and um, it, it was good. Obviously, someone like Stephen Gerrard wanted to sign me. Jesus, he's. I used to, used to have them. See the wee the wee bodies and the big heads. Yeah. I used to have when I was younger, and he used to be in my midfielder, and he used to be in my champ man team. And I was like, Fuck yeah, I'm going to be playing. I'm going to actually be playing under Stephen Gerrard. So that's obviously another bonus. Obviously, Rangers speaks for itself. So the excitement was there, um, and all of my mates was like, I always have a lad, I have a lads chat with two of my two of my mates from. From Scotland and um, massive Rangers fans, I was like just speaking to them. I was like, "Listen, that's up. I might be going to Rangers. It's probably ninety nine percent sure." But it was kept in the group that, and it was amazing. Um, and they they were buzzing, but yeah, I think I think it didn't matter who what manager was there. Oh, well, oh, we can go on. But being there, with Steven Gerrard was obviously. That excitement. And how is he as a manager? After you've signed for Rangers, you go and what was your initial impressions? I'm impressed. Speaking to him on the phone, and then 
signing was too different. Like he, he, he keeps himself to himself. He's quiet. And the longer I was there, I started realizing that Michael Beal. I think he's he's the the man behind it. No disrespect to Stephen Gerrard because I think he's he's an amazing manager. How he approaches himself and what where he's took Rangers from day one to now is night and day. He's made Rangers a force again in Scotland and in Europe. But Michael Beale, he's behind the scenes and he's doing. He's I think he's the the brains behind it. Mm-hmm. Technically, he's 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 amazing. I uh, I think if Stephen Gerrard went managed to say uh, I think everyone knows he's he's lined up for Liverpool at some stage. If he's went to Liverpool and Michael Beale stayed, I think there wouldn't be a change. Really, right? I think Michael Beale is he, he just everything. He's in he's in everything detail, um, and. He, he, he could probably step up to be the manager wow. um, because he, he's that good, Billy. See when, so see when you signed there, did, were you told by Stephen Gerrard that you'd be a starter? Like um, he, no, he, did, he, he didn't really, he didn't really say I'd be a starter. He did, but because Alfredo was there and he's he's done so well, and he didn't say I was going to be on the bench. He says that I, I'd get my fair share of games and. Obviously, that's how well I perform as well, and um, I was like, I, I, I was like, I was like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be playing for Rangers again. So, obviously, that getting that chance again, that's enough for me to be back home and stuff like that. There is brilliant, but obviously, I want to, I want to play, I want to make a difference in the team and try and win the league for them. But obviously things didn't work out for planned and Alfredo Alfredo he he's kicked on like I remember with Hearts watching Rangers games and thinking, Fuck you hell man, I can't stand that guy. Never passes. It's just all about him. I got there and he's I mean, I don't know what the, the difference was from that season. He just he was a completely different player. Just Completely you different. Play, you can in the Premiership, Jay. You can play in the Premiership. Aye, hundred percent. He's he's kicked on and he's kicked on again last season, and he's just a note like in Europe as well. Like he's he's just a different player. And me and Alfredo got to be amazing mates. It's as strange as it sounds, I didn't have a clue what he was saying, and he didn't have a clue what I was saying. But we we were like. Great pal. And we always had we always had Daniel Candace. He was yeah, it was us three always going for coffees and stuff like that. It was us three and obviously Daniel was the translator. But like Alfredo could have been calling me a prick and all that when Dan was in there. I was like, oh yes, brilliant mate. But brilliant. he's he's a, an amazing guy. Um and yeah, hundred percent he can play in the Prem. Um but I think the long reads are really there's the the bigger chance that we we love of Win the win the league. See, uh, see, just on your second spell at Rangers, you've got played out left quite a lot as well. Like, was that a bit frustrating? It's just the way that we played. Like, he he wanted to play. He says he he tried to to up top. That's what he had planned and stuff like that. There and didn't really didn't really like work when we played up top to up top because the fellow he he was just. There's no discipline in Alfredo. He just he, he was himself. He's just ran everywhere, mm-hmm. and I just left me in a position that I might as well have let up a cigar and watched them run around. You know, I felt like the third wheel kind of. I was just like <laughs> so. I, to try and get me into the team, he kind of played me more of, more of the left. And mate, when I was first at Rangers, I played. I actually played the majority of me. First time at Rangers, out in the left. It's the worst position I've ever played. Yeah. Hated it, mate. I've actually, because it's always in the back of my mind. It's they can't. I can't make the the mistake to let them score. So I've always, I've always took the defending part of the game more important than going forward. When I was like, I was like, 
So Walter and Ali would used to tell me, listen, you're a striker, but you're in the team. We want you in the team, so you have to play out in the left. But I could never, I could never, I was always shattered. I could never get it past the halfway line, to be honest. Um, but it was just, nah, it was, uh, to play up front, uh, I needed to be probably by myself or someone to play off me because Alfredo, he, just, he was just everywhere. He was just, he just wanted to do too much. And I think this season, he still puts in our, the last two seasons, he's just he's put in a shift, but he's, he's in the right the box and that's where he's scoring 30 odd goals a season now. Do you wish it went differently a second spell at Rangers? Aye, 100% man. I don't know why, what... Why did it work out as, much, as well as you, you'd hoped? I don't know. I, I mean, I felt nervous as anything at Rangers the second time. I don't know if it was because I was playing on the Stephen Gerrard or what, but I don't know. I felt... I spoke to him. I remember going and saying, like, just speaking to him and saying, getting some answers why I wasn't playing. I was like, I actually feel like I'm in a trial. You, that must be good going out to improve like you have to improve and like make an expression on me I think I don't know because I feel nervous you make me feel nervous so I don't know if I don't know what the, it was weird because I had a feeling like he, he's, he keeps himself away from everyone and he doesn't really talk to many of the players he doesn't really talk to many of the players and I, I, had a, I had a feeling like he regretted signing me after a couple of weeks. Did you ask him that? No, I, and I didn't ask him, but I just felt like I've, I've mother well, my debut, scored two goals. A few weeks after, I scored against Villarreal in the Europa League, and I'm thinking, nah, surely I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing all right. And then I just, I don't know, I, I think I maybe overthought things and stuff like that there but what well, was it never a like a well done Kyle brilliant that was excellent the, against St Johnson away we were losing 1-0 I've came on Cha- uh, no, you could kind of see I changed the game we went on to win 2-0 or 2-1 and he came to me in the dressing room came up to me and he went you perform like that every game or any time you get a chance then yes that's what we want that's what we that's what we sign you for mm. so it made me feel good but then it, it was it was strange it was i don't know if it's the first time i've never kind of been able to have a bit of banter or i was like joking with the manager or the manager made me feel like wanted mm. i think that maybe got made me feel like insecure or something like that there but it was just a weird feeling and I think it been playing a massive part in my performances and I mean I felt like I was 16 again making a, a debut professionally. Especially like your established player and the season you'd had before that as well. It was mental. Like I used to get the ball and I was like panicking. I used to like be in games and like don't pass me the ball, don't pass me the ball. Wow. And I was like this isn't me and I said it to him and I, he just, just be yourself. Like I signed, he used to say the, some of the greatest, like best things. Like that's why I signed you because what you've done this season before. I'm like, that's good to know. But then the next game, I might not get on, and we might be, we might be losing the game or drawing, and we need to win, and I wouldn't get on. I get on for three minutes. I'm like, mm. what the hell, Jim, you need to be at a place where you're like always the main man. Yeah, you play better when you you've got that manager who thinks he's my number one. He'll play every week, no matter what. Hey, Michael O'Neill's done wonders for me at Northern Ireland. He made me probably made me appreciate myself and know what what I was all about and play to my strengths and stuff like that. There that I've done so well under Michael and obviously being at Austin at Hearts, Austin made me. He made me like the big vocal point. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, vocal point. Yeah. Like, but those like Christoph Burr played championship, played the high level all his career, and there was people in the team as well that was like played the same level as me. But the horse just made me feel like it's down to you 
yeah before and we win the game and stuff like that there so it was good and the fans made me feel like that as well I think I think I, I definitely need to be a place that I'm loved or I'm wanted and it, 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 it would help me did it come as a shock then when the, the contract was terminated like how did that come about? You still had a year left on your contract. Yeah, I had a year on my contract. And I was getting offered offers here, there, and everywhere, and on more money and stuff like that. There, and I was just like, I don't know. And the window closed, and oh, the window was coming to be closed, and I just said to myself, "Will I regret staying here?" Taking the money, I'm not going to play. I was told before I'm not going to play. You're going to be in the. You're going to be training with the. When you told that? At what, st- what stage were you told that? You were told there was a handful of players told this end of the season before. Right. So like, you know, we got in and we were we were changing in the young lads' dressing room. Wasn't allowed to park in the pro car park or anything like that. Complete. There wasn't even allowed to use a pro gym or wasn't even even allowed to eat with the first teamers so I'm sitting no eating, I'm sitting eating with 15, 16 year olds me and me and like Graham Dorrance does was playing in the Premier League for 10 years so it's things they got it's like nah I can't be here man and take, taking a wage and not being involved and I said I actually sat down one day one night, night and just thought and thought the way I left the first time I regretted it well, I regret taking that money and not being involved, not playing a part in Rangers again, giving someone that they could sign to go and help in the league. Should I just leave? So I've terminated my contract. I agreed to terminate my contract and left. And they went on and obviously signed a few more players, which has obviously strengthened the squad. So I just couldn't couldn't be there. Like I missed it. I missed it so much. Like. Even when we beat Celtic 2-0 at Ibrox, I was in the stands and I was itching to be... It's the first time in Old Firm I wasn't involved in. Right. I was itching to be in among the fans. I was in the director's box and just in my, su- my suit celebrating when we scored, but not, not, not being able to do a normal fan thing. Um, and I was like, nah, I, mean, I can't. But I always wonder, this, see when, uh, when you're, you, uh, you get told you can't train the, the team, you've got to train the youth team, you know, who tells you that? Is it just, you just get, there was, is it a coach comes in and says you can't, you can't the, do the things anymore? The, 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 Stephen Gerrard told us, he's like, listen, you're going to be, next season, you're going to be, you won't be part of the, the squad, you'll be, if you're here, you'll be part of the, the on the 21s and the, the youth team squads and all that. You just accept that? You just accept that, huh? Aye. Like, there's no way, like I came in and I've, didn't even have didn't even have a training kit. I was I was wearing fifty three, one of the younger lads' training kits and stuff like that. There, I was like, Christ's sake! And I I was meeting some of the lads, seeing, like walking past some of the lads in the training ground or in the training ground, and I was like, felt awkward talking to them. Like, nothing worse, mate. Nothing worse. I mean, you've got Davo and Jordan Jones and all lads that I still still speak to because they're friends, but. Like some of the lads that I was teammates, I was like, I feel awkward sitting here, like speaking to them. I've always said this in interviews as well. Football's mad, isn't it? Like one year with Hearts, you're absolutely flying. A year later, mate, you're as low, lower than bullshit. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, it's mental. Just, uh, just now, obviously, you're without a club. Um, what do you want to do? You want to stay in Britain? Is it back abroad? What are you looking for? I don't know. Like, I miss this jury. Again, in the next couple of weeks, she could be given. She could be in labour, or waters could have broken out in the kitchen. I don't know. But, Especially after some of your stories. <laughs> <laughs> but now, like she's due to give birth any any week now, so it's just one of them things that like to hold off and see what happens. But I, mean, I love going abroad. The whole everything that comes with it, like training in the afternoon, having a coffee, just in the sun and stuff like that. There, it's 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 a different feeling. And, I think it, uh, my game suits abroad, like people that doesn't understand English and my language, I can say whatever I want to them and they look at me and they smile and stuff like that there and I can fling my elbows and I can just do whatever I want. 
and they, they don't know what I'm saying. Stuff like that there, like, I, I love that. And, like, if I'd say that to someone in the UK, they'd fucking come back. <laughs> I'm like... They, 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 get, get, get yourself back to the hearts, man. Maybe, you know what? I'd, I'd go back to hearts. Like, I'd, but even when I, before I left Rangers, I, I was like, spoke to her, Austin and they're like, listen, your name's there. It's up to the manager now. But I think he wanted to sign his own players rather than people that's been there before. But I'd, I mean, I'd go back to hearts. Um, they're, they're an amazing club and it's uh, the amazing people own it and I think obviously what's happened to them now with the f- relegating I don't think the fans deserve it and most certainly I think Anne Burge the budget deserves deserves more thanks very much for coming on mate absolutely loved it no worries top man well man I'll speak to you in a bit